Aqui temos we have here um the skull of a monkey. De the Harpias eagles eh, feed upon some of the species of this group de, and of two perezoso species. E duas espécies de preguiça. Its favorite monkeys are mainly the aloata and the macaco cebos, cebos de the latter being menor. smaller in size. Uh, so you can recognize them. I'll show you an illustration from this book. The macaco cebos and the two species of perezosas. Of these, particularly the Fraña Real, and among the monkey species, mainly the Macaco Prego, more common. Although it also hunts younger specimens of the largest primate of the woodland, the Aluata. Just like Tania, two Spanish biologists are investigating the habits of the Harpy Eagle in Panama. Many are those that anonymously struggle to maintain the presence of this bird from the south of Mexico to the north of Argentina. In spite of the menace, the large harpia is in good hands. Tenderness is the key in our following story. A lot of sugar for this sweet encounter between birds and human beings. Thousands of kilometers away from the Harpia Eagle's Nest, in Puerto Jofre, on the shores of the Paraguay River, Doña Maria sweetens the lives of the sweet-toothed hummingbirds. A woman and an ecologist, in this manner she fills her garden with happiness and paixarinhos, as she calls them. This woman likes birds, and attracts them to her home with kindness and understanding. Her garden is a refuge, an oasis in the cruel desert of the bird hunters, and the birds are ever so grateful. In Brazil, many people like herself do not know what it is like to feed a pigeon, but do know what it's like to feed hummingbirds, the identity of the tropics. Besides enjoying this friendly story, it also permits us to get close to surprising behaviors, for example, observe this hummingbird. It feeds on nectar, as do all the members of its family, and that's why it goes up to the artificial flower that Doña Maria has sprinkled with water and sugar. But something is going to make it change its diet today. The ants are attracted by the sweet temptation and get dangerously close to the nest. This will force this nectar-eating bird to devour ants in flight, more in defense of its chicks than as an entree. Its nest is the size of a liqueur glass and is built with saliva and spider web. Hummingbirds have very big salivary glands precisely for the building of their homes. The female is the only one responsible for reproduction in all known species. The agility, control, and hyperactivity of these animals attract our attention. Hummingbirds put a lot of heart into their lives exactly 20% of the total weight of their little bodies. Too much heart, an enormous motor for a minute hyperactive bird. Just to get an idea, in our case, the heart is one half of 1% of our weight. In comparison, nothing. The sharp beak is vital for sucking the nectar, but with a tongue inside that completes this sophisticated instrument. The tongue of this specimen is four centimeters long and acts like a precise hydraulic pump. A hummingbird can suck nectar non-stop for 16 hours a day, filling its crop with food that would be like a human being eating 50 kilograms of bread. What happens is that its metabolism transforms all that excess into energy, the fuel needed to move the turbo of its wings. How they move. This male of the Califlox genus reaches 80 beats per second, and the sound it produces in flight is characteristic.
Accordingly, a mosquito moves its wings 500 times in the same period. That's why the buzz it produces is fine and bothersome. There are people in Brazil who can distinguish the types of hummingbirds by the buzzes and sifting they produce. Each specimen, a sound, a cylinder capacity, another of Mother Earth's murmurs from the air. Although all human beings have a right to decent housing, not everyone has that. Fortunately, this does not happen in the animal kingdom. The birds, all of them, build their homes exactly where they need them. They undoubtedly need experience and knowledge to build beauties such as this one, the Clay Joao house. We invest our money, they invest their time. A male and female have taken a week to build this wonder. We've gotten close to this wonder outside of the breeding season. We won't endanger the reproduction of the clay joao, this little bird, but we will get close to the nest so you can see it to show you an example of an abandoned nest that will no longer be used for reproduction, show you an example of amazing animal architecture. It's an authentic shell, a shell made of cow manure at times, and in this case of adobe, what we could call adobe a mixture of earth and small straws, of small graminae. The entrance, as I say, is like that of a snail's shell. It prevents the entrance of any predator. And then we find a cozy chamber, the place where the chicks, the eggs before, are protected from the heat and dust, the harsh climatic conditions. This is a structure that awes me, because among other things, and on top of everything else, it is resistance to the presence of unwanted and undesirable tenants. David against Goliath, a vulture weighing a kilogram and a half, enjoying the light of dawn perched on the clay house of a modest and hard-working bird. The urubu is the South American vulture, known in Venezuela as the zamuro, in Cuba as the tinoso, and in the times of the Incas with the sacred name of Zopilote. For the Clay Joao, this big ugly bird is neither a god nor a saint. The Urubu is a dangerous neighbor that with its weight can destroy its home and family. The two chicks, frightened, see their enemy from the inside of the nest. Death is posed on their rooftop this morning. And they know it, because although it is an animal that feeds on corpses, the urubu would not hesitate in having the two little brothers as appetizers in the blink of a beak. It's incredible, but without arms, these two frightened little chicks embrace each other. With their comings and goings, almost nonchalantly, the parents have succeeded in making the urubus go away. Here in the Brazilian open country, it's more important to be clever than strong to get out of difficult situations. Back at home, and out of danger for the moment, the parents check the inside of their marvelous home. It's well built, but the weight of the urubu has made the walls tremble. A few pieces of clay have fallen, as if there had been an earthquake, and now, to get things back to normal, they must be taken away from the presence of the chicks. Peace once again reigns.
This father feeds his chicks all kinds of insects without end. He wants to erase the fear with goodies. The Clay Joao are massive consumers of spiders and caterpillars. They're good for the fields, and the farmer knows this. Their understanding of the ruling climate is also well known. The entrance hall can be either to the right or to the left. It all depends on which way the wind and rain comes. At any rate, the entrance to the house is narrow to avoid invaders. So much so that we can see the effort it costs them to get inside their own lair. The Clay Joao is a very popular bird in Brazil. Many people have spoken to us about it and about its original sense of architecture. <laughs> 